Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So today we are going to uh, just do a little bit of a philosophy thing again. A, a lot of it's just because I have so many projects and um, I need to get uh, get working on some other things. But it, something else though occurred yesterday that I I thought about this general topic, and so I wanted to go ahead and introduce it. So Kitty's here too. Hello, people. All right. Um, so. What happened is, um, of course, as you, as many of you know, and I've gotten a lot of suggestions of things to look into, um, was uh, I've been looking for a replacement of Skype. And so the number one thing that seemed to be on the radar was Discord. <laughs> oh, boy, did I have a bad experience with Discord. Um, and so I, I looked this over and said, well, I just don't know if Discord is really ready for prime time yet. And uh, understand that I'm not a guy who's like, I'm just going to use this because that's what the geeks use. I'm a business person. At the end of the day, I am a complete, completely self um, self-reliant freelancer in the web world. And so I don't have a big company behind me. I don't have, uh, you know, I don't have a, another job. I don't have other things. In fact, my secondary job is this doing YouTube. Um, not this doing rap, but this doing YouTube. <laughs> okay. Um, and so what I, the reason I still do use Skype, despite I think it's a bunch of garbage is that, um, Skype is, uh, Skype works. It works with people. Now, I'm not about to use Mac, which just works. Actually, it works less than it used to. Um, but it occurred to me as I wanted to experiment with Discord, and I was able to get Discord working just fine on Solace right here through the Snap packages. The problem became communicating that same account with the other computers in my office. The one computer I really need Discord running is this one, whatever it happens to be, and it will change from week to week and the Mac. And the reason is the Mac is primarily for me used as my communication device. The system is, it's just so hard to get good work on with the UI that uh, I just pretty much use it as a communication device. I'll communicate with Skype, I'll communicate with uh, with whatever else. I have email accounts over there. I'll do a little bit of light graphic design. I'll do um, some things. If if some if a computer is suspected, like if a website suspected of being hacked, I will either do it on the Mac or I'll do it on the uh, Cubes computer, depending on which one is available. So there are good uses for the Mac computer. Um, but the problem is I had Discord running over here and I'm doing uh, screen testing and video chatting and regular chatting with people to experiment. Um, but the, I ran into some problems and the problem I ran into on the Mac was that um, it, every single time I'd go to the site or to the app, it'd be like, claim your account. So I'd enter the email address and it would give me the same error. It's like this email address is already being used. It's like, I'm aware it's already being used. I'm trying to sign in. There was nowhere to do that. And then what the challenge became, so I was going to just try and use the, just the, the browser version. And it just turns out that I need to go through five different CAPTCHA screens. They like verify you're a robot. And by the time I had already wasted 15 minutes of my time just going through CAPTCHA screens for this thing, I have no idea why. So they were had so many CAPTCHAs on them, I just decided, screw it. I closed it, I sent them an email, I said close the Discord account, Discord account, just delete it, and I'm done. So I will not be on Discord anytime soon. Maybe I'll reevaluate it in six months. Maybe they'll they'll get their head out of their butts by that point in time. Um, but what I found is that it was just too hard to use. There were too many issues. There were too many barriers. And that's what I want to talk about in this video here on why has the Linux desktop not uh, taken over? Um, and I'm going to identify some things. I actually found five things, but I want to do this more of a philosophy and not, not really part of my top fives. Um, but I am going to identify some of the things, and many of us in the community are aware of this, uh, but these are kind of my top issues uh, based upon doing this for, for a couple years now. Um, and in no real particular order, I could try and order these, but I'm just going to do these in no particular order. The first is there's too many options. And this, frankly, is a good thing and a bad thing. I'm not saying we need to drop a lot of the options that we have, but what I am saying we should probably do is 
maybe revisit some of the terminology or at least make it a little bit more mainstreamed. I think some people do talk about there being a lot of different terminologies out there. And the thing is, is that there's several core distros. So you have your Arch, your Arch, you have your Manjara, you have your Debian, you have your Ubuntu. Uh, maybe you'd say Mint is its own thing. Uh, Solace, of course, is a new and upcoming. And there's several other ones out there. Uh, OpenSUSE, Fedora, Red Hat, you can't forget those. So those are kind of like your core distros. And then a lot of the other things that we find on DistroWatch that are that are desktop related are kind of spin-offs of that. Now, there's some things like your network security one, you know, you have your Parrot, you have your Kali that are penetration testing systems. Um, you know, those, of course, are good. Ubuntu Studio is, is a great thing to say if I'm going to be a you know, creative person that these are these are spins that have all these things. But then we have just a whole lot of other things popping up that, that are not just bad. It's just they're they're just there and they produce so much extra noise in the desktop Linux community that it produces an idea where people are like, I want to look at switching to Linux, but I don't even know where to start. And so that's kind of why I like doing the top five views as to the top, top things you might look at for new Linux users, because it will give you that framework that we're not getting bogged down. So like uh, Farron OS is a good one that, that is, is cool. It's based on Mint, but it's it just has so much extra stuff. It's just not a, a distro that I would point a new user to just because it's Linux Mint with extra stuff. And, um, of course, someone may argue that leaving Linux Mint is Ubuntu with extra stuff, frankly. Um, and so you have that, and then you got your Fedora, and then, you know, Fedora with extra stuff. You have an OpenSUSE and Gecko. Gecko, you know, Gecko is OpenSUSE with extra stuff. And so we end up with all of these things out. Now, of course, I like the, the Cororo and the, and the Gecko in that it takes a lot of the difficulty out of the uh, the Fedora and the OpenSUSE, respectively, uh, and that it's not trying to do extra things. But then you'll get other distros that are just like, what is the purpose of this? <laughs> it's like, and that's the thing is that produces so much noise that a new user might want to look up Linux. And depending on where you are or where you've seen things or where you've heard something, you just don't know where to start. And it produces what in business is called paralysis of analysis. There's so many choices and so many options. You just don't know where to go. And I'm not advocating to stop doing these things, um, but at the same time, um, I don't know what the exact solution is. It's just an observation. There's a lot of options uh, for the Linux desktop computers, and that's one of the things we need to uh, we need to think about. Now, the next one's a little bit more controversial, and this ties back into why I chose not to use Discord at least for a, for another several months. Um, common services are not well supported. And many of us in the Linux community don't care. <laughs> okay, and in reality, I don't care about a lot of it. Um, but when you when it comes down to where the rubber meets the road, people unfortunately use their desktop computers now for a lot of things, a lot of media. We're used to Dropbox, we're used to Skype, we're used to Google services, we're used to all these things that us in the privacy in the Linux world, we don't really want there to be. <laughs> okay, I won't use Dropbox. Even in business, I won't use Dropbox. Um, I don't want to integrate my computer with Google, so I don't want to go into the online accounts and enter my Google or, Lord forbid, Microsoft password or anything like that. Um, I don't want to do all those kinds of things on a personal level, but on a business level. So, for example, I'm going to be doing an audit of a, of a city's network here soon, and, um, you know... Well, I don't re necessarily recommend Windows or cloud services or things like that. I'll probably recommend some in that instance for that business environment because we need to make sure that those common services are used. And this is the thing is that in Linux, several of the common services people want to use or expect to be available because they're so used to it on their, on their smartphones or tablets or their Windows or Mac computers, we need to keep that in mind. And I am very pleased to see several of the newer Linux distros having that type of support built in. That's something that Mint has done well with the latest 18.3 is that there are some of these things that eh, we may or may not actually want there to be in there, but at the same token, they're there because that's what people need working. You know, let's maybe get somebody off of Windows first and down the road, we can get them to start slowly de parts of their life. You know, let's not be traumatic and do it all at once. Um, and so 
several of the distro's common services are not supported. There is a, a unfortunate side to this coin that that is that DRM issue. A lot of these services people expect to work like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and all these types of services, they work because of DRM. The advantage of having DRM into the system is that these systems, these services will work. And of course, that hurts the Linux community that really wants to be free and open source and doesn't like DRM. And I hate DRM, but I'd rather somebody have one browser with DRM than be on Windows or Mac because they think it's the only choice. And so we need to get those common services working at least on some level and teach people that they do. And that's, you know, as much as I'm a little leery on Mozilla right now, at the same token, Quantum does do some pretty good things in that respect that stuff like that works. I don't like DRM, but I like the fact that the fact DRM is built into Firefox and, and into Chrome, um, if not Chromium as well. Uh, I like the fact that it exists because it reduces the barrier to getting people over onto the Linux environment, for better or for worse. Uh, and so we have to get those common systems working. Um, the next is, with Linux, there are still some problems that will pop up. Now, this is where guys like Pogo Linux and System76 are really stepping up the game in that you can get a system that's already optimized for Linux. Because, as some people say, if you go out to the store and you buy a brand new computer that has Windows installed on it, that thing's optimized for Windows. Now, I personally... Um, since I'm a, uh, you know, I'm kind of a cheapskatey type of guy, uh, and I will uh, buy used computers more often than not, I will go and buy an open box computer that runs Windows and get Linux working on it. Um, but for a basic user to do that, a new user to do that is going to be a little bit harder, uh, especially figuring out which distro might work. So like, I have a lot of problems with elementary. I've never had problems with Mint. Some people have problems with Mint and don't have problems with elementary, and I think it has probably to do with hardware, because it occurred to me that the majority of my computers are all, you know, Intel Core i5 processors. Maybe that just doesn't work well with elementary, but other systems do. So I'm kind of curious to know, how does elementary work on this computer, which is actually an AMD processor? I'm And I've never tried elementary on this computer. So I'm actually thinking about running elementary for a while on this. Uh, just to see how well it works on this computer. Um, and so we have to keep those types of things in mind. Um, and when little problems arise, they can seem on the surface to a new person to be complicated. So like you install a system and USB drive is not working. Well, you might need to look at a proprietary driver. Ubuntu and Linux Mint are doing great in that they have the the proprietary servers or the proprietary drivers in there as well as an option that you don't have to use, but they're an option you can use if you want to. Um, but several other distros, it's like the thing's not working. Okay, run this command through terminal. Uh, what's a terminal? You know, new user doesn't understand some of the technology. And while those of us that are more seasoned in Linux, we don't have a problem jumping into a terminal and figuring something like that out. The challenge we encounter is that uh, to a new user, some of these problems and some of the solutions on the forums can be overwhelming. And we have to keep that in mind. Um, and so we need to overcome that and maybe come up with more GUI and more user-friendly things, at least on some of the more basic distros. Uh, to see uh, to see how things are working there. So the next thing is we can't find Linux in the big box stores. Um, we or will really take over the desktop when you can go into Best Buy and someone can buy a Linux computer that works and is optimized. And for this, I would ask the companies like Dell and HP to start pushing it a little bit more. Now, I hate HP, by the way. Uh, I will not buy HP products. But HP and Dell are two of the computers that do have options where you can go to their website and you can buy a computer with Linux installed. And maybe it might be up to them, even if it's a distro that some of the hardcore community doesn't like, like Ubuntu, maybe it's worthwhile to say, hey, let's garner support behind HP and Dell and start pushing Linux distros into the big box stores. Because when someone can go into a box store and see, here's a Windows option, here's a Linux option, and here's a Mac option, Will we see an increase in the Linux users? Now, of course, the, in marketing and in business, we call this a re-education process. 
part of the challenge is re-educating people that Linux is going to be different. Just like Windows and Mac are different environments, different uh, operating systems. We have to teach people that Linux is a different operating system, just as powerful, but still a different operating system. And so if you remember back a couple years back, there's this girl who's literally blaming Dell because she didn't know what she was doing. She ordered a computer and had Ubuntu pre-installed from Dell. She's like, I'm blaming Dell and I had to drop out of school. Like, grow up, woman. <laughs> You know, um, and and the thing is, um, in that particular situation, uh, in that particular situation, all she needed was just a real little re-education. It's like, no, you can do all the same stuff. You just you use different software packages. That's really the same thing. Um, you you need to be a little bit more proactive to realize that some people are are using different you know different systems and whatnot. And so, when we can start finding Linux in open, in big box stores, that's really when we're going to start taking over because it will become more options available to the world around us. And the last part ties right back into that marketing and, and uh, re-education, and that is that many people don't realize it's available. Um, we need to teach people and help people. And those of us in the community, we have to not be computer nerds as much as positive advocates for the great things you can do. And just in me and showing people what the system looks like and, and how it looks, um, you know, it's it's a breath of fresh air to some people to look at to look at Linux and go, wow, that's that's a cool desktop. That's a cool computer. Can I can I check my email on that? Oh yeah, no problem. How's this program? Uh, can I get on YouTube? Absolutely. Here's you know here's this program. And we what we need though to do is make more and more people aware that it exists. And in fact, I, I mean, I had a I had a friend not long ago who who heard Linux and thought it was all still terminals and command lines. And as long as Linux is terminals and command lines, that's hard for new people to catch on to. And I agree, absolutely. We need to learn how to use the terminals and, and things like that. Uh, but for a new user, that's a huge barrier. And so what we need to do is we need to uh, we need to teach people what's out there. So those are kind of my things. If we really want to see the year of the Linux desktop, Number one, we need to clarify our language so that A, people know it's available, and B, they know which options are there, not get so caught up on the little spin-offs and the little odds and ends, but instead just focusing on, on kind of the core ones and identify just a couple distros. Each of us should know three or four distros to point a new person to, not just point them to our favorite, you know, because, you know, open box is totally rocking, so everyone should run Bunsen Labs. Well, that's going to get a Windows or a Mac user to run away from Linux for life. Uh, but give them something nice and user-friendly. Um, and whether it's the same type of environment they're used to or different, that's, you know, either way, but have options for people. Um, we need to make sure that, that we are even recommending some of the distros we may not like as much, but has access to the common services so that people realize that they can still get as much stuff done and help them overcome some of those challenges and maybe build more GUI way solutions to problems rather than relying on the terminal so much for the new users, which I understand. Absolutely. Now that I know how to use the terminal, I'd rather go into the terminal for half the things I need to do rather than mess with the GUI. Uh, but a new user, that's intimidating and we need to do that. And then of course, we just need to get Linux into big box stores. That's the biggest thing. So if we can accomplish those five types of things, we could actually very possibly have a year where the Linux desktop takes over, um, at least starts to gain market share pretty fast. So thank you for watching. Once again, if you'd like to help support what we are doing, support, <laughs> support what we're doing, check out switch to linux.com. Um, forward slash support to learn about all the ways you can help support us. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.